What's up, YouTube? First and foremost, shout out to all my subscribers. Drop those comments, run those likes up. I know that you guys already know it helps push out my content for the algorithm. However, it helps me to, to remind you guys. If you don't know what to say in the comment uh, section, you know, put an alien. We've been doing that lately, dude, and it's been really, really cool. I enjoy seeing little alien faces. I do it myself for Alien Ascend. It's dope. Uh, if you don't know what to do, but yeah, the alien, uh, if you do an alien emoji, all you have to do is actually type in alien and it pops up and it's cool. If you don't uh, want to do that, a thumbs up, a smiley face, a hi, I respond to 99.9% .9 of my comments. So I want to thank you all for rocking with me and uh, run up those likes, uh, you know, really helps push my content out, as like I said before. <clears throat> um, shout out to my uh, donations. It's been a, been a few days since I got one, uh, but I, I'm thankful for anything uh, at all. Uh, so, you know, thank you very much. Uh, if you want me to give you a shout out for a donation, just put it inside the message. I actually do leave my cash up in my description. It's the same as my YouTube, Alien Ascend. So if you do want a shout out, so far nobody's asked for a shout out, uh, which is cool. I mean, you guys just want to be anonymous and, and I respect that. If you do want a shout out, uh, you know, put it in the message if you actually want me to, to give you a call or whatever uh you know you can put that in the message too man put your phone number in there i'll give you a call and uh i keep everything private um probably call you private too i don't want my phone number being leaked out where i start getting prank calls in the middle of the night when i'm trying to sleep you know what i'm saying however uh probably star 67 you know what i mean yeah, I, I trust you guys however uh i uh, just got to be a little bit on the safe side um and i hope you understand that uh we're growing uh, we're growing every single day i'm over a thousand subscribers still need the watch time uh hours to be ran up um you know for me to be able to uh, uh apply to monetize uh monetize <laughs> probably saying it wrong monetize shit i can't say it right <laughs> Basically, I can't do it. I need to run up. Uh, I need to run up uh, the watch time. So, if there's videos you guys haven't seen yet, uh, you know, could you please watch it and help me out a little bit? Uh, if this is your first time here, and you like my content, subscribe and uh, you know, throw some comments uh, on all my videos. I'll respond and uh, w watch all my videos that you're interested in. It really does help me out, and uh, hopefully, you know, I educate. Hopefully, you guys, uh, you know, get entertained by this. I really love doing YouTube. Uh, this is the been a one hell of a surprise the support system is awesome i mean that alone is is great you know uh that alone is worth it uh 110 so you know keep rocking with me i actually do put a video out almost every single day you know i'm not gonna say every single day because sometimes i miss a day here and there but uh i always put out good content and i always put out you know i put it out very regularly um now the video starts at <laughs> uh so anyways this, this video is um first winter homeless in midwest what it's like i might change the title but that's what we're rocking with it's basically my first winter um being homeless in the midwest uh if you're wondering what states are the midwest i actually googled it to, to be sure so there's illinois indiana iowa kansas michigan minnesota missouri nebraska north dakota um ohio south dakota and wisconsin so there's a total of 12 that they put in there right now i know that um uh you know i used to uh run regional right and uh i even did a little bit of regional work when i was doing otr like over the road i did all 50 states however you know, every once in a while they'd be like you know uh we're gonna have you in uh you know the midwest some people would would uh say you know nebraska's you know nebraska's not uh midwest to me uh if you pull up the map it looks right there you know what i mean nebraska um does get cold does snow a lot i've actually been stuck in snowstorms there in my personal vehicle and also um uh, in an 18 wheeler as well I don't drive trucks anymore uh by the way i guess i forgot to mention i am homeless i do live in my car uh if you would like to have the full story um i do have a video called full story you know homeless my full story check it out i don't drive trucks anymore however i may go be going back uh just kind of going back and forth in my head about it a little bit <clears throat> but if you're interested in that, I have videos about that too. Why I quit trucking? I might even make a video in the future. Why I return to trucking? You never know. You know what I mean? I'm always, you know, risk versus reward. Like yesterday's video, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, trying to be very calculated and trying to, you know, try not to mess up and trying to put my best foot forward. And uh, I'm always positive. Uh, well, 99% of the time, I'm very positive. I don't let the negativity get to me. Um, which is how I am. If something does feel negative, I think of an uh, of outcome, what I can do to make it better. <clears throat> I'm somebody who brings solutions, not problems. Uh, but so what it's like, um, you know, I, I, I know the Midwest uh, fairly well. Um, not only being homeless out here, but before I was homeless out here, I lived out here and I drove trucks out here. I, um, you know, my everyday life was out in the Midwest. <clears throat> so I know, I know, I knew what to expect. And, uh, uh, quite frankly, in October of last year, 
um, in, the, in the Midwest where I was staying at. I was homeless, of course, in October. I've been homeless for, for quite some time living in my car. Um, uh, I've been homeless without a car before, too. For some watching, I've been homeless without a car. It's a very long time ago. I've been homeless with other vehicles a long time ago as well. This is probably the one of the longest stretches I've had uh, having to live in my car. But, um, you know, if you follow along my journey and watch my other videos, um, you know, uh, I think you'll get a lot of answers and hopefully you rock with me. You know, that, that's my, you know, that's what I'm hoping for. And uh, if you don't rock with me, that's cool. There's plenty of people who do and I appreciate more. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you want to rock like that, then cool. Um, so, um, where was I? So, yeah, I knew what to expect. So in October, um, we got hit with uh, 15 degrees, you know, right off the bat, kind of in the beginning of October, you know, it's fluctu fluctuating between, between 15 and 18, and then dropping to 32, and then staying in the 30s, and then, then there was a couple times where it was uh, gonna be below 15. So I'm like, all right, man, I already know this is a sign. Like, last winter wasn't quite as bad as this. This is coming on in October. So I know that November and December is probably gonna be like what January and February is normally like, and then January and February is gonna be really, really bad. <coughs> so because uh, because of that, and I was uh, at that time I didn't even have I didn't have my 30 degree um, sleeping bag. I just had my 40 degree um, sleeping bag that I had in my vehicle, along with my other stuff, um, you know, uh, a couple of comforters and you know uh, some towels and things like that. So I was struggling a little bit, and um, I was like, you know what, this might be a good time for me to leave now since it's gonna be like this and I think it's gonna be worse later. And you're gonna hear the whole story about this. So what happened was I went ahead and uh, went to uh, Nevada. I went to Nevada. I uh, was like, you know, I can do DoorDash there. I can do Uber Eats. I know they got BLM. Uh, I don't, I can't remember what BLM stands for, but basically it's, um, it's, it's land that you can go ahead and boondock on. And if you don't know what boondocking is, boondocking is staying in a vehicle or throwing up a tin. But yeah, I think most of the time boondocking is literally being in a vehicle or a recreational vehicle, your car or whatever, right? <coughs> so um it um i looked at henderson nevada i didn't want to do las vegas um i know that straight off the top las vegas you're not going to find any um you know rest areas or truck areas to park into you know there are signs that, that that say it and then also on top of that uh i was like you know there's some bml land out there i can go ahead and uh you know stay there and maybe i can find some low-key places and uh it's not all the way you know um you know like I know that uh, in Las Vegas, um, you know, like Las Vegas itself, it, it kind of dies down uh, around December. And then it starts popping popping over again in like February, right? <coughs> like towards the end of February. Excuse me for my cough, man. Uh, last night was um, negative uh, four, night before negative seven. And right now it's, uh, it's pretty darn cold. It's about eight degrees right now. And it's supposed to get down to, I think, negative two tonight. Um, so... You know, I, this cough, I got finally, I think I finally got rid of my sore throat. However, I do have this cough, man, and uh, it, it, it's annoying me and bugging me. And then I uh, I still feel like I'm a little bit nasally, um, and that normally never happens to me, and it never happens to me for long periods of time either. It's literally this weather, the dryness of the my car heat, the, you know, the humidity outside, uh, and uh, the snow and the ice, and it just being very, very cold temperatures, you know what I mean? <coughs> um, so, we, you know. You know, don't give me a hard time if you hear me take a deep breath of air or, you know, clear my throat. It's, uh, you know, I live in a car, man. This is this is what happens. <laughs> so, uh, nonetheless, um, I go to Henderson, uh, Nevada, and, uh, you know, I saved up a little bit of money. It wasn't a whole lot, and I drove, uh, drove out there. I decided uh, from the research I did um, that I'd stay in Henderson area and that the DoorDashes and Uber Eats would be in Henderson where the locals live, right? So now I'm not worried on tourists and uh, stuff like that. Now I don't have to worry quite as much as uh, I would have, you know, about drunk drivers and, um, you know, uh, you know, bad, bad traffic. All, all Nevada is going to have traffic. However, the strip is something, something else. You could be stuck on that thing for an hour and a half to two hours. You know what I mean? Or longer, who knows, right? <coughs> So I, I go out there, and uh, the first thing I noticed was uh, very, very hard. Um, you know, like I thought, I thought the truck stops around Henderson were going to be different. Um, you know, uh, even according to the research I did on online, I thought, okay, only in Las Vegas are you going to have to look for, um, you know, paid parking. I thought Henderson would be okay, right? It wasn't. So the truck stops, the rest areas around there, um, all, all for uh, cars. 
all had signs, no um, uh, no overnight parking, will tow at, at, at owner's expense, and there were security guards uh, in, in most of the locations. You know, and if there wasn't security guards, it, the, the the truck stop places and the people, they were constantly walking around doing their little laps at that time. So I'm like, okay, they're gonna they're gonna know if somebody stays here overnight. You know what I mean? So. <clears throat> I'll go stay at the, BL, uh, the BLM land and I looked on uh, camping I think it was camping.net is what I used and saw there was BLM land that wasn't too far away from Henderson so I went ahead and, and went there and when I went there thankfully uh, there was a guard shack that was there <clears throat> and uh, to get in there I think it's seven bucks and or you could buy a annual pass for forty dollars if you see me adjusting myself it's so that the glare is not in my glasses and you can you can actually see me and I could you know not squint my eyes because of the light um, but thankfully I went there and I think I uh, got there around 1 30 2 o'clock in the afternoon and there was a sign saying you know please enjoy yourself I'm out to lunch go out go on in <laughs> like all right I don't have to pay cool <clears throat> I go in there and I'm trying to find you know like okay where's the place with the bathroom at I can sleep in my car that's no problem I see that you could have fire pits that's cool it seemed like people could be spread upon uh, spread apart and there was uh, quite a bit of locations it didn't look too bad but where is the bathroom at you know I don't mind you know stepping outside and doing what I gotta do but I'd like to have a toilet you know what I mean just in case something happens um there was no toilet uh, it looked like there was a building for it. However, it said something like, you know, pipes busted. I don't quite remember, but it was definitely locked. There was nothing you could do about it. <clears throat> I stay there, and then, um, uh, you know, I go ahead and, uh, I, you know, early in the morning, I leave. And then that at that point, I was like, okay, when I leave this place, do I have to check out of the guard shack? Nope. There was two lanes, uh, and you can get out of there. So I'm like, okay, cool. Left, went ahead and tried to work, work in Henderson. Nobody was tipping whatsoever. Um, uh, some of my orders, I was, uh, it was trying to get me into the, literally like the strip area. And for my research was like, you know, don't ever do the strip area for, uh, for DoorDash or Uber Eats. You're going to be stuck. You know, I don't know those buildings. So if I deliver to a hotel, you know, I'm going to have to stand there and waste a lot of time to either call them to go downstairs to meet me and it could leave me a bad review, or I'm going to have to be like, you know, you know, can I give me clearer instructions? What floor are you, are you on and stuff like that? So I ended up doing that for a week. I was there for about a week, and uh, I switched locations after uh, the, the two days in a row. I stayed at that BLM land because now I know that that guard shack dude, uh, you know, goes and eats lunches at 1:30 or two. So I, you know, started early in the morning. Normally it dies down at two, but you could pop back out around uh, like five, six, seven, and do some more door dashes or weeds if you wanted to. You know what I mean? I at that time I was just trying to fill everything out. So the very next day I go and I I, I started at six and uh, ended at uh, you know 1:30, 2 o'clock. Swing by that guard shack, same sign up there. Like, All right, I don't I, I don't have to pay. Thankfully I didn't have to pay. You know, which is cool. <clears throat> Stayed there. And then uh, I was like, you know, um, they're, you know, this, the person who, who's eating lunches isn't always going to be here. And at, at the moment, I really don't, I don't know how long I'm going to stay here. Am I going to move to another spot? And one of the biggest things I noticed that I uh, slipped up a little bit on was what is the price of gas? And, the, <clears throat> and I thought, okay, if the gas costs a lot there, people will, will yeah, the inflation will, will, you know, like people will know um, to tip more is what I was hoping for and what, what I kind of thought. And that's some of the research that I showed, but you never know until you try, you know, maybe, you know, and everybody has a different experience. So my experience it might be different than somebody who lives there who only does it, you know, two, three hours. I was there in October of last year and this is what I was, was, was going through, you know? So, um, uh, basically I go ahead and, uh, there's a lot of shoulders, uh, before you get to the BLM land where you can pull over and stay there. And there's, and fortunately there's a lot of people who leave trash there. And since the trash is piled up and not doing anything there, I know that, you know, um, there's probably a good chance that, uh, cops don't come there and bother you if you're sleeping on the side of this road. And, uh, that's what I did. <clears throat> I did that. And then I was doing, um, uh, I was still doing Uber Eats and DoorDash. I wasn't making very much money. And now, and, uh, at the time it was over $6 a gallon. Some places were $7. So I was trying to find what the cheapest was. And there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of apartment buildings out there as well. And I don't know the gate keys and I'm like, you know, 
you know, like, I, I also don't know the restaurants where, you know, um, some of them I walk inside there, and they're like, no, you have to go to the drive through Or some of them I go to the drive through no, you got to walk in. And some of them, um, you know, are notoriously being, uh, you know, taking a long time. <clears throat> like, you know, you could stop uh, at a McDonald's and they'll have that order. Uh, and then two blocks away, if you stop at that McDonald's, you've got to wait an extra 20 or 30 minutes. Or let's say it wasn't a McDonald's, let's say it was a Mexican restaurant. That Mexican restaurant could be notorious for, um, you know, uh, taking their sweet ass time, basically. And at that point, you know, I, I, I don't wait more than 10 minutes unless I, it's really, really going bad and I shouldn't be waiting 10 minutes. But, uh, you know, if I go, I go there and when, when it says that the order is going to be ready and, uh, I shouldn't have to wait that long, you know what I mean? But I will, if the money's right and I will, if nothing's going on, but I mean, literally, <clears throat> why should I always be waiting 15 or 20 minutes or longer just to get somebody their food and they're going to leave me a bad review like it's my fault that, that it's late when I'm not even the one who cooked it I'm just someone who's grabbing it and leaving you know what I'm saying <clears throat> so at that point I said you know what um uh I maybe maybe I'm better off making money where I'm at and I was really banking on that um December you know like right before you know I, I was really banking on November where Thanksgiving was coming through that people would uh you know like, I know that they're going to have families. Maybe they maybe there's some shop orders that will pop up. Or maybe people, when they're having their family, they, they're going to want, um, you know, uh, food delivered. I was banking on that. And I was banking on people being more charitable. And I was doing that. I was banking on um, uh, Christmas being like that as well. So I went ahead and uh, I went back. I went back to the Midwest. And I'm like, at least, at least I can afford the gas there. At least I can make ends meet. Over here, it's costing me too much. <clears throat> it's costing too, costing me too much, but the weather is better. You know what I mean? Weather was way better. Like it was like like 70, 60, 70 degrees at, at night. Um, you know, and I don't remember what it was during the daytime. Daytime wasn't too bad, but it was like 60, 70 at night. Um, and uh, it was you know at the time you know uh, between like 20 and 30, sometimes even lower. And I was just thinking that was the beginning of everything going really really bad. So I came back out here, and then when I came back out here, everything was was, was uh, actually like it started to, to be better, and uh, and I was like, okay, let me get a thirty degree um, sleeping bag. I can double up on both of those. I can uh, I can do this and I can do that, and I can make myself okay. And normally, as long as it's not under thirty, I'm uh, I'm pretty good, you know. But uh, when it starts getting past twenty, and when it gets in the negatives, it is it is extremely hard on me. Uh, you know, it's probably hard on a lot of people. Uh, some people, you know, uh, they're okay. You got to remember that um, I take blood pressure pills and, uh, you know, uh, uh, I could have side effects with my legs and my feet. You know what I'm saying? With like circulation and stuff. At least that's what my doctors have told me. <clears throat> so, um, like I said, last night was uh, minus four. And then the night before that was minus seven. And I, you know, the last few days I've been putting a video out every single day so you can see what I'm talking about. So today uh, and uh, yesterday I, I like was worried about my feet because they were ting like tingling really, really bad. Uh, like I think even before the night, uh, before the night of uh, uh, the negative seven, I think I said that, you know what, um, I think it was... 20 or 15, no, it was 15 degrees, and uh, I was sleeping halfway in my trunk and halfway in my um, my uh, uh, back seat. I put the seat down and I lay like that, and my feet were really, really tingling and numb and stuff like that. Well, I've been trying to keep an eye on that because I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to get frostbit. I don't want to, I don't know everything with it. I just, you know, I don't want to lose a toe. I don't want to lose a foot, and I don't want to lose a leg. You know, I don't want to lose any part of me, my body. You know, but I definitely. I need those things, you know what I mean? I need those. They're part of me. <clears throat> so, um, uh, you know, I, I, you know, first first night of the, the negative seven, man, I did everything I could, uh, you know, to, to prepare and be okay. I was all right. Um, the next day, uh, you know, uh, which is negative four. So now we're moving into now. And uh, today, man, when I went to use the, the bathroom, when I got up in the morning, uh, I didn't have to use it right away, but uh, a little bit later I did. And when I did, uh, I, I'm, wearing, uh, I'm wearing ankle socks that aren't very tight. And right around my ankles are like a big old like indent of the actual sock itself. And then there's some other indents uh, moving up my leg a little bit. And like it just scared the crap out of me, man. It scared me, scared me pretty bad earlier this morning when I when I saw that. <clears throat> I'm like, man, my legs got really swollen up. I know that I've been sleeping in my driver's spot, and having your legs down like that, you're not going to get very much blood circulation. And then also, um, hot air rises, cold air stays down. So I've been like having layers down there. I didn't have on you know knee high socks that were you know like all the way up. Um, 
I slept with the regular socks that I that I've been sleeping with. In fact, I think in the back here I gotta throw them on before I before I go to bed. Um, and they're like thick, thick ones. Actually, you know what? I think they're up over here. Hold on, I'll show you. These ones, you know, nothing too crazy. These things are not crazy tight. Uh, I had those on, but um, uh, I don't keep those on during the day. Those are like, I sleep in them, and if I put my shoes on with those, it feels like the shoe's too tight. So nonetheless, I had uh, some ankle socks on, and uh, I change my socks and underwear every single day, and I shower almost every single day. Today, I, I showered at Planet Fitness, and uh, that was cool. Um, did that, that was first thing in the morning. So I did that in the morning, and I didn't even see it, or I didn't notice it. So I didn't notice that at all, but I noticed uh, noticed it about an hour or two later after the, after the shower I had this morning. <clears throat> I see that, I'm like, oh man, you know, that tells me that my legs are swelling up, that I need better circulation, that either I'm sitting or standing too much. I don't think I'm standing too much. I think I'm sitting too much. I am a driver, so I've been walking around today. I went ahead and, uh, you know, inspected my feet again. I, and uh, the bottom of my feet are like, you know, I'm not going to show you guys this, and I know it, it, it sounds crazy. You know, I'm a grown man. I don't want to show you my feet. However, I had a swollen tongue a few weeks ago or about a month ago. I had a swollen tongue, and I did a short on that, and I thought I thought that was, you know, was okay. But showing my feet, why, why would anybody ever want to see that? So don't worry. I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> but basically, it's, uh, it's kind of like white and dry. And uh, I do have feeling in all my toes and my legs and stuff like that. However, it took a long time, like I'm talking about several hours of not wearing socks and just having the heat going on in my car and blowing down, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, basically babying them and seeing, you know, is my, my, my legs going to, you know, bounce back, you know, uh, am I retaining too much water for a certain reason, uh, started thinking about the food I was eating. However, it's scary, um, you know, so, uh, I may, uh, you know, and I've talked about it before, you know, I've had some comments saying, you know, maybe you need to chase warmer weather and maybe you guys are right. You know, I, I, last thing I need to do is chase warmer weather after I've lost, you know, I've been amputated a leg or a foot or something like that. Uh, some things do hold me back. I've had some questions where it was like, you know, what, what's holding you from, you know, going somewhere warmer. And it's literally the stuff that I said about risk versus reward, you know, like I could leave, uh, this place you know, leave the Midwest and go somewhere warmer. It doesn't have to be West. Maybe, uh, maybe I go down South, you know, <clears throat> um, I know if I go West, uh, it just, the, the price of gases are just, you know, the, the more West you get, the higher they go, uh, according to, uh, what I've been looking on, uh, looking on the internet, you know, and I'm not a local, so I don't know where the cheapest place is, but the internet is pretty savvy for the most part. I have a general idea of uh, what it would cost. And a lot of it is, you know, pretty, pretty darn expensive. It's me not knowing where I could park at, where I could go to the bathroom at, what the market's like for DoorDash and Uber Eats, and, you know, what restaurants take a long time, what areas should I not go into, what areas should I, uh, you know, should I, you know, focus on and stuff like that, right? <coughs> However, uh, moving forward, uh, if this weather continues like this, yeah, I think I'm going to go down south and, I'm, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be south Texas, south Florida, um, probably think Florida might, might be a better bet. But um, I like to be able to stick it out because this is what's crazy with everything, man. The last couple days in this really cold weather, I've been actually doing pretty good with Uber Eats DoorDash. So like during Christmas, I wasn't doing very good at all. There was just too many drivers and not enough orders, right? And now, it, you know, I, I, I do drive when it snows. I do drive when there's ice. I do, uh, if, it, if the ice is really bad, then no, I don't drive because my car doesn't handle very, uh, you know, it's a Honda Civic, it, it's light. It does not, it does not like being on ice or snow very long, right? However, um, with that being said, uh, what I have noticed when it's this cold, there's less drivers and more orders. So like the last couple of days, I've, I've actually been doing pretty well, you know, a lot better than what I have been and, and I'm happy for that. I mean, by no, by no means am I raking in hundreds and hundreds of dollars, no, but, uh, but I am making more than what I did. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm getting uh, better quality type orders, like making a little bit more money for a little bit less miles, which is good because I live in my car, so the wear and tear does, does add up. So it's kind of like a catch-22, like <clears throat> with this cold weather, less drivers, more orders. I, you know, like during rain and snow and stuff, like uh, if you've watched my, my videos before, during rain and snow or whatever, I'm like, hey man, I'm out here, I'm being positive, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to make some money here, uh, you know, trying to offer a good service. You know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm here at 6.30 in the morning. I'm, you know, I'm here at six. I'm ready to, you know, start taking these breakfast orders and everything else and, uh, you know, deliver them and stuff like that. And that, um, 
you know, I maybe maybe only a couple drivers don't show up, but the rest do because they stay hungry. But now I think I found their kryptonite. And their kryptonite is this cold weather, and I'm okay with doing it uh, to a certain point. Like today, I was working a negative four, uh, and then it finally started going up. And then by the time and man, it is it, it's hard on me, dude. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm not a spring chicken. That cold is is bad, especially when you have when you're holding somebody's hot food and you're ringing a doorbell and you're waiting. And it says to hand to the customer and you're waiting there for three or four minutes. Three or four minutes in negative four. Even though I'm bundled up, I'm wearing a lot more than what I'm wearing now, and I'm wearing layers. <clears throat> I'm out there three or four minutes. Like hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, man. You know, by the time by the time they grab that, uh, my hands are frozen. You know, even though I'm wearing gloves or you know, uh, you know, I'm jumping in my car and it's you know, my ears are ringing because of how cold it is. And there, there could be some people on here that you know that are you know uh, that that say you know what, be thankful you got a car. Trust me, I am very thankful. If I didn't have a car, I would not be in this state. I would be okay with being in, in Las Vegas because uh, or or a warmer state. Uh, I'd be a lot, lot better, uh, be more comfortable in that because now I'm not paying for gas. <laughs> now I just need to just lay my head somewhere safe and, uh, you know, make a little bit of money so I can eat, you know. Uh, having a car uh, and having the seat, I'm very, very thank thankful for and I'm very blessed. And uh, I always look at the positive stuff. And then, um, uh, you know, I always think, you know, things could be worse. You know what I'm saying? There's people out there that for them to get water, they got to walk like three or four miles to a river and carry something on top of their head. Me, um, I can go in this truck stop or a rest area and get water. I can go into a store and buy water. You know what I mean? So I am very, very thankful. Um, so that's what, that's what my first uh, winter's like uh, in the actual Midwest, but I've lived out here for a few years. I'm not originally from the Midwest. Um, but that's basically uh, what it's like so far. I may end up leaving. I kind of want to stay, but I also don't want to lose any of my feet or my toes or anything like that. So I want to thank you for rocking with me. If um, if you can, shoot me um, shoot me a donation. Uh, you know, uh, show some support. That'd be really cool. You don't have to. Alien to send. It would also help uh, with me deciding. You know, should I go down south? You know, should I uh, should I move to another place? You know, one of the things that's holding me up is do I have enough money to get out there? You know, uh, are my back tires good enough? My front tires should be but you know there's little things it's not like i can go ahead and decide to go right now and go i still have to you know get a couple ducks in, in line so um one of the biggest ones is money of course you know can't do shit without it <clears throat> however that that's my problem not yours um but if you if you do want to support me that's great i appreciate you um it's alien ascend uh uh Cash App is Alien to Sin, just like my YouTube name. Um, I ask that uh, if you can, watch a, watch a bunch of videos that you haven't seen before and help me run up those watch time hours. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you have any questions or you just want to bull crap on the phone for a little bit, if you want me to give you a shout out for a donation, it's no problem at all. Uh, if you do uh, leave your phone number and I call you, I am going to have to block it just because I don't, I'm afraid what if it gets leaked out and I don't want a bunch of prank calls. You know, I don't want to be in the middle of the night trying to sleep and uh, my phone keep vibrating. I'm like, what the hell's going on you know what i'm saying not saying that you would i just got to be on the safe side uh, i want to thank everybody for rocking with me and uh thank you so much